So in this video, I'll be sharing 50 Unreal Engine tips that cover hotkeys, workflow shortcuts, some basics, plugins, and more. And if you're an Unreal Engine expert, you might probably know a lot of these tips already, but I think you will find at least one or two that will be useful to you. And if I didn't miss out on anything important, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. I've also left timestamps as well as some relevant links in the description box. So starting this off with tip number one, you can press Ctrl and Spacebar to toggle the content drawer. You can also dock it in place with this button over here. And the best part about the content drawer is that you can use it while you're working on other windows. So let's say I'm working on materials, all I have to do is press Ctrl Space, same thing with Niagara and Blueprints. If you want to add actors to your scene, go to Create, All Classes, and then type in what you're looking for. But what I would recommend is that you go to Create and then click Place Actors panel. Now it'll make a little window where every actor is organized and you can dock it wherever you want. If you're not a fan of the UE5 layout and you want the UE4 one back, go to Window, Load Layout, and UE4 Classic Layout. And if you want to switch it back, go to Window, Load Layout, Default Editor Layout. I'm sure you know how to move an actor by dragging it on an axis, but did you know that you can move along with it by holding Shift and then dragging it? You can copy an actor by pressing Ctrl C and Ctrl V. You can also make a copy by holding Alt and then dragging it on any axis. And to move along with the copied asset, hold Alt, Shift, and then drag it. Actor piloting works like you're processing an actor. It could be a static mesh, it could be a light, but the real value is when you use it on a camera. So instead of trying to frame the shot manually, you can just right click, pilot actor, and then frame the exact shot that you want. And to leave, click on the triangle on the top left. You can press the W key to move an actor, E to rotate, R to scale, and press spacebar to cycle through that. To scale an object evenly, Click on the lock here, beside scale and transform, and when you key in a value, the same value will be applied on all three axes. And if you have an object with a different XYZ value, and you click the lock, and you scale it, the same value will now also apply uniformly. You can snap axes to the ground by pressing the N key. This is convenient if you want to set up your levels quickly. You can change an actor's pivot point temporarily by clicking on any surface with the middle mouse button. But if I let go, and then I come back, the pivot point will be reset. You can toggle game view by pressing G. And to go to full screen, press F11. You can press the F key to zoom to an actor. This is a very good way to navigate your level, especially if you have a bigger one. This also works on the world outliner. So let's say you got lost while you're working on your level. So just click on anything that you know is in your scene and then press the F key. To zoom in, hold the right click and then press the C key. And if I let go, I'll be back to normal. Now to zoom out, it's the same thing. Just hold right click and then press the Z key. And if you want to change your FOV permanently, Click on the drop down menu on the top left, and then go to field of view. You can either increase or decrease it. So this tip is also on navigating your level. You can press any number from 0 to 9 to use a viewport bookmark. And to set up a viewport bookmark, press Ctrl and any number from 0 to 9. So for example, I'm going to be looking at these rocks over here, and then I press Ctrl and 0. If I walk away, and then I press 0, I'm back here. You can also do this manually by going to the drop down menu on the top left. You can jump to bookmarks. Set bookmarks and also clear them from here. To hide an actor, click on it and then press the H key. This also works in multiple actors and to unhide all of them, press Ctrl and H. To find an object in the content browser, click on it and then press Ctrl and B. This can also be done by clicking on the magnifying glass over here. If your actor is a static mesh, you can also press Ctrl and E to jump to the static mesh editor. To rename a file, instead of right clicking on it and then rename, click on it and then press F2. This also works in folders and the world outliner. You can have up to four content browsers, so just click on content, content browser 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this is something that a lot of people might not know about. If you hold control and the middle mouse button and then you drag up, you go to top view, down bottom, left back, right front, and if you drag diagonally, you'll be back to perspective. You can also do this by going to perspective on the top left and then choose it manually, but I just find that this is much quicker. So let's say you have a few static meshes that share the same material and you don't want to select them one by one. So all you got to do is select a few and then right click, select similar material. I binded mine to Alt Q to make it faster, but this is completely up to you. This also works on Megaskin's assets. Which then brings me to my next point. So you can set your own custom keybinds by going to edit, edit or preferences, and then you want to click on keyboard shortcuts. Now you can either scroll through to find what you're looking for, but I recommend to just type it in. So I'm just going to type in material, and there we have it. Select all with same material. I bind it mine to all Q, but you can change it as you wish. If you want to place an actor to a precise location, 
Firstly copy it and then click on the surface that you want it to be on. Then we use the paste here command. Now to set it up, go to edit, editor preferences, and then just type in paste. I bind it mine to backslash, but this is completely up to you. Too many things in your workspace. Don't worry, select what you want to work on. And then right click, visibility, show only selected. This works like an isolate tool, and to bring everything back, press Ctrl and H. If you ever find yourself changing the camera speed a lot, and then you do this, please stop, there's a better way. So move forward, and then hold right click, and as you scroll up, you'll move faster. And it's the same thing for slowing down, so move forward, right click, and then scroll down. The next tip is on the post process volume. You can do a lot of things with the post process volume, but it only works if you're in the bounds. So if I go in the bounds here, my scene is changing, and if I go out, it's overexposed again. Now to make this affect the whole scene, go to your post process volume, and in settings, just type in infinite. And there we have it, make sure you check infinite and bound, and now it will affect the whole scene. You should always set your minimum and maximum exposure at a constant value. This is so that it's easier to work on your lighting and to keep things consistent. You can also consider turning off auto exposure, so go to settings, project settings, and then just type in auto exposure and make sure you uncheck it. Tip 27, exposure compensation. So I have two post process volumes in front of me. The one on the left has an exposure compensation value of five, and the one on the right has a value of negative five. If I step into the one on the right, my scene turns really dark, and if I go back out, it's back to normal. And if I step into the one on the left, it becomes really bright. So this is a very quick way to change your brightness without having to adjust the lighting for the whole scene. If you're using Lumen and you want to change your GI quickly, go to the post process volume and type in Lumen. Now you can choose Lumen, Screen Space, or Ray Trace. You can control the directional light by pressing Ctrl and L. If I drag it all the way up, it's noon. And if I drag it all the way down, it's nighttime. This can also be done in a more controlled manner. So go to your directional light and then press E to rotate. You can move the sun rays around, and I would only do this if I want it to be really precise. If you're using Lumen for your lighting, and you see a lot of splotches and artifacts on your wall, an easy way to fix it would be to go to your post process volume, and then type in Lumen. We're looking for final gather quality, and change it from 1 to 2. And as you can see, most of the artifacts are now gone. With Unreal Engine 5, Emissive Materials now produce direct lighting. This is the same scene in Unreal Engine 5 and in Unreal Engine 4. So in UE4, the ball is not producing any sort of direct lighting, but it is over here. And if I move it, the light will follow. If I increase the size of the ball, the light will be brighter. This also means that you can use submissive materials as a part of your lighting for your scenes. To add a point light quickly, hold L and click with the left mouse button. Nanite is a new feature in Unreal Engine 5 that allows you to use super high poly models at almost no cost. So firstly, for static meshes that are going to be imported, you just have to make sure that you check Build Nanite while you're importing it. And secondly, for static meshes that are already in your scene, you want to click on the static mesh and then press Ctrl and B. Then right click, Nanite, and enable it. Tip 34, Output Log. You can type in your console commands over here, but if you want to see the full log, go to Window and then just check Output Log. You now have this window over here and you can dock it anywhere you want. So if you see this message here on the top left, it basically means that you might not have enough memory for your scene. There are two possible ways to fix it. So firstly, go to settings, project settings, and then you want to type in virtual textures. Then make sure you check enable virtual texture support. Now, you also need to make sure that you have your Apple logout. If you don't have your Apple logout, go to window and then just check Apple log. And then you want to copy and paste this command, r.streaming.fullsize. And when you press enter, you should see a couple numbers. For me, it says 1010. So these numbers basically mean how much memory you have in your texture pool right now. So if I increase my number from 1010 to 2000, that should probably fix it. But I do not recommend going too high with the value here. So plugins are like optional extensions that can help with your workflow a lot. And to access them, all you have to do is go to settings and just click on plugins. So the next tip is also on a plugin. This one is called the DataSmith plugin. And basically, this plugin helps you import scenes from other 3D softwares all into Unreal with just a couple clicks. So to show you an example, this very scene here is made in 3ds Max and imported into Unreal with Datasmith. Before we begin, there are two things we need to do. Firstly, go to Settings, Plugins, and then just type in Datasmith. You need to check Datasmith content and the Datasmith importer. You'll be asked to restart and then just click Restart now. Secondly, you have to download the exporter for whatever 3D software you're using. I'll leave a link to it down in the comments below. 
So just download it and then install it. After that, let's say I want to import this uh, Among Us toy and my Doge Cup all into the Unreal scene. So what I have to do now is select them and then go to File, Export, Export Selected. And we just have to export it as an Unreal Datasmith file, u.datasmith, name it something, and just click Save. Now back in Unreal, all we have to do is go to Content, click on Datasmith, and click on the very file that we just saved. I'm going to save it under Datasmith, click OK, make sure the geometry, materials and textures, and cameras are checked. We don't need lights or animations because we don't have any of that. And most importantly, we need to make sure that generate UV light maps are checked. And just click import. Now just give it a while to load and while we're waiting, you can just type in exposure in the world outliner. And click on global exposure post process and delete it. And there we have it, both the Among Us and the Doge Cup are in with just a few clicks. Although we have to do some minor adjustments on the materials, that was almost effortless. So give Datasmith a try, it's actually my favorite plugin and it will save you a lot of time if you do AEC. So the next tip is on the water systems in Landmass plugin. So these basically let you make oceans, rivers, streams or even lakes all into Unreal with just a few clicks. So to begin, go to settings, plugins and then just type in land. Make sure you check Landmass and water and you'll be asked to restart so just click restart. Then go to your place actors panel and then just type in water. Now let's say I want to add a lake so just drag and drop water body lake and there we have a lake. To add a river it is the exact same thing just drag and drop water body river and drop it in. You can also control the size with the nodes and you can also join the water bodies together. To add an ocean go to an empty landscape and then just drag and drop water body ocean and then you want to scale it down just like that. You can also control the size of the waves how fast it moves and if I go underwater there's an automatic post process for it. So the next tip is on the movie render queue plugin. This one looks like an extension of sequencer, but you get a higher quality and the cinematic look. So to set it up, go to settings, plugins, and then just type in movie. Make sure you check movie render queue and you'll be asked to restart, so just click restart. After that, go to window, cinematics, and just click movie render queue. Then click on render and choose the sequence that you want to render. Then click on settings and I would recommend removing JPEG and replacing it with PNG because it has a higher quality. Click on settings and make sure you add anti-aliasing in. The anti-aliasing method has to be set to none. You can also change the temporal sample count to 64 and check override anti-aliasing as well. So the higher the temporal sample counts you have, the higher the quality will be. But I don't recommend going higher than 64 because 32 or 64 will do. You can also save this as a preset so you don't have to set this up every single time. Click render local and you're done. Tip number 40, please do not add every single plugin. I know plugins are amazing and all but having every single one of them just does not work. It'll just slow your Unreal Engine down to the point where you can't even get any work done. And I'm speaking from experience because that is exactly what I did when I was starting out. Instead, what I would recommend is that you just get a few plugins that you really need and then just start from there. So in Unreal Engine 5, Mega Scans are now a part of Unreal by default. So to access them, go to Content and then just click on Quixel Bridge. You'll be then asked to sign in and after that, you'll have access. If you go to the 3D Assets section, you find out that some of the models now have a nanite option. So what the nanite option is, is that it basically means that the model has the highest amount of polygons and it is meant to be used with nanite. So you ever notice how the default sequence moves kind of weird? It starts up slow and then it speeds up and slows back down. So to fix it, go to your sequence, select the keyframes and then change them from cubic auto into linear. And now if you play it back, it'll be linear, which is way more common. Asset filters can be used to organize your files in the content browser. So to get started, click on the little drop down menu over here. And if I click on basic, it's gonna automatically select blueprints, C++, materials, skeletal mesh, static mesh, texture, and level. So let's say I only want static meshes. So all I have to do is left click on everything else to toggle it. If we wanna add textures and materials to the filter, I just have to click on texture and materials once. You can also clear the filters by right clicking and then click on reset filters. Now you can also add an asset filter for everything over here, making it super convenient to find your work. So these are just some hotkeys that you can use in the material editor. So if you hold one and then click, you get a constant vector node. You hold two and then click, you get a constant two vector. You hold three and then click constant three vector. You hold four and then click constant four vector. If you hold M and then you click, you get a multiply node. D and you click, divide. A and you click, add. And lastly, if you press S and you click, a scalar parameter node. A quick way to break connections between nodes will be to hold Alt and then click with the left mouse button. 
You can also move the connections between nodes by holding control and just dragging them around. Does your material editor ever look like this? Bruh. Well, if you want to clean up your workspace and remove some of the nodes that are not connected, you can click on the clean graph button and it'll remove everything that is not connected, making it a little bit tidier. So you can also use comments to tidy up your workspace. So just select a couple nodes and then press the C key. You can also rename it and resize it as you wish. To take a high resolution screenshot, go to the drop down menu on the top left and you want to click on high resolution screenshot. Then, make sure you're in full screen, so to do that, press F11. Next, you can choose whether you want to crop render, or you want to render the whole viewport. So to render, click on the little camera, and there you have it. And then, there'll be a little pop-up on the bottom right, and if you click on it, it'll bring you to where the files are being stored. You can also increase the size multiplier of the render by increasing the values over here, but I don't recommend going higher than 2 or 3. You can also increase the quality of the render, by going to the drop down menu on the top left and then increasing the screen percentage. By default, it is 100, but I don't recommend going higher than 120 or 130 because it'll affect your whole viewport and it might crash your Unreal Engine. Tip 49, some channels that you should know of. So these are just some channels that make content on Unreal Engine that I personally watch and I've learned a lot from. I'll also leave the link to the channels down in the comments below. So starting off with Unreal Sensei, he has tutorials that are really long and in-depth. Some are 2 hours, some are 4 hours making it suitable for someone who's an absolute beginner. William Foster, so he covers stuff on film, cinematics, lighting, and other general tips, which are all in super high detail and very easy to follow along. Mr. 3D Dev, so he covers mainly game art and cinematics, you know, materials, and he has a lot of tutorials that are explaining all of this in detail and why it's done that way. Smart Polly, so he covers game dev content, from character animations, making maps, open world games. He also has a few videos where he shows the process of how he made a few games from scratch. VR Division. So VR Division covers stuff on ArcViz, how to import your models from other 3 softwares, how to texture them, and how to light them all in Unreal. Ryan Manning. So Ryan has videos that go in detail with lighting, texturing, materials, and other general tips. Dev Attic. So Dev Attic also covers videos on game dev, on how to add specific kind of games or features into Unreal. Dev Enable, so Dev Enable is also about game development, but they are more focused on the development pipeline with a lot of in-depth videos. Code Like Me, so Code Like Me also covers game dev content, mainly programming blueprint. He also has very specific videos on how to implement certain features like NPC, main menu, open world map, and many more. Last but not least, we have Polygon Academy, so Polygon Academy mainly focuses on game art, a lot of videos on how to set up environments, how to set up scenes, how to compose them, as well as how to like them. The final tip is on the Unreal Slackers Discord channel. So this is a server with a lot of Unreal Engine users from all over the world. You can look through the different channels that are categorized accordingly. You can also chat about the topics there, ask questions, and even get feedback about your work. There is also a job board where you can look for a job or a project that you want to work on or even hire people to help with your project. And most importantly, you can hang out with these amazing people who are all passionate about Unreal Engine. That is it for the video. Please consider liking and goodbye.